Hi everyone, we are Nena Becker and Karina Kropina, developers at SAP. We work in S4HANA source to pay and order to cash, recently known as S4HANA procurement. We are based in Waldorf. And last year, our team identified a blockchain use case in the sourcing and bidding process. We worked on the proof of the concept and we would like to introduce it to you today. First, we will look at how today's sourcing and bidding process look, which gaps are there that can be closed with blockchain. Then we'll see what's the idea behind the new product and how it's implemented. Then we'll see how our enhanced solution secures sourcing and bidding process with blockchain. Uh, we'll see how all involved parties in the process profit from the new solution. And finally, we'll take a look at some UIs and apps developed within this proof of concept. So then let's start uh, with today's sourcing and bidding process. So I think, can you, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> um, so let's start with today's sourcing and bidding process. Um, how does it work and which part of it can uh, be maybe starting points for fraud? And um, to make this a bit more visualized, um, we prepared a short story for you. So this is Peter. He works for a big car producer company, which is called the Car Factory here. And for the production of the new, new supercar 5000, his boss told him he needs to source 1000 headlights. Just to give you one heads up here, usually manufacturers um, buy parts for assembly of the car from different suppliers. So therefore, there um, is a need to have negotiations between purchasers and all the invited suppliers. Based on these negotiations, then the purchaser decides in the end um, for the best offer and the supplier um, who submits the best offer will get a contract. So back to the story and back to Peter. To start the whole process, Peter has to create a request for quotation document first. This is what he does here. And uh, in this request for quotation document, um, it says that um, he sources for 1,000 headlights and he invites two different suppliers to the negotiations. The first supplier is Sarah's supplier from the Lightbulb GmbH and she submits a quotation and offers a price for 300 euros per item. The second one is Stefan's supplier from the Northlight AG. He happens to be a good friend of Peter. Of course, Peter wants his good friend uh, to win the contract. So this is why he gives him a call and tells him about the offer he already received from the Lightbulb GmbH with a price of 300 euros per item. The next day, Stefan submits also a quotation um, with a price about 299 euros per item. So a few days later, the awarding process ends and as Stefan offered the best price, the Northlight GmbH wins the awarding process and gets the contract. Sarah is very frustrated and also angry because the Lightbulb GmbH lost this process a few times during the last years and uh, this is why she um, suspects that there was fraud and the Lightbulb GmbH starts a lawsuit against Peter's car producer company. So we just saw there are potential starting points for manipulations and we need to improve this whole uh, process to avoid fraud and enable a really fair process. So how could service supplier be, be sure that the process is fair and what, what is the solution that would help to close all the gaps we just saw? The answer is simple. Basically it's a process that's highly secured because of data that's immutable, permanent, distributed and reliable. And these are exactly the data properties that blockchain offers. Uh, blockchain does not necessarily need cryptocurrency in the process. We, uh, like Bitcoin, we don't operate with any currencies in procurement. Instead, we store hashed values um, in blockchain. These are the hashes of our Q documents and quotation itself. Um, our proof of concept is implemented on SAP Cloud Platform with the core process still running in S4HANA. SAP Cloud Platform offers two services for blockchain implementation. It's a multi-chain and hyperledger fabric. 
we decided to go for multi-chain. It's a bit more robust and mature compared to Hyperledger Fabric. And um, basically, it's a service on a CP Cloud platform, which is also at the same time a platform for building blockchain. Um, it um, leverages the functionality of Bitcoin open source platform by reusing its functionalities um, and adds some functionality for uh, corporate use cases such as security and user management. Um, Multi-chain allows us to create an own private blockchain network or join already existing blockchain network if permissions are there. And I would like to emphasize the importance of private possibilities the importance of possibility of private blockchain um, network here because only invited suppliers should be allowed to join us at this and this is really a core part of our process. So let's see then how the process looks like with blockchain embedded. Um, will, be, will we be able to uh, detect the fraud we just saw? But first of all, I want to give you an overview about the processes which are running in the background right now. So as Karina mentioned before, um, in the blockchain we don't store information about financial transactions like it's um, with Bitcoin, but we store the hash values of the different documents which are crucial for our process. So let's assume that the car factory just creates a new request for quotation document and sends this out via email to all the suppliers. Um, on the, in this email, there will also be the request for quotation document attached and um, the supplier can later on submit their quotes. So just in this moment, in the background, there will be a new stream created in the blockchain. So in order to secure the initial process of creating a new request for quotation, the hash value of this document gets stored in the first block of the newly created blockchain stream. The same happens for the quotation documents um, that suppliers submit before the registration deadline ends. So in our blockchain app, they can easily upload the document and then its hash value gets stored in, a block, in the blockchain in the subsequent blocks of the stream you just saw in the slide before. Remember Peter Purchaser? As usual, he thinks of his good friend Stefan and gives him a call. Hey buddy, received my RFQ. Looking forward for a really good offer from you. Sure, tell me what other offers you got and I'll adjust mine to be the best. Wait a sec, I need to look into the system. Oh no, I can see hash values only. It's not possible anymore to see real offers before registration deadline ends. All right, just give me a call after registration deadline. Okay. Great, registration deadline passed. And now I can see all offers in the system. The lowest is from Lightbulb GmbH and they offer a, pr a price of 300 euros per item. I'll submit an offer with 299 euros per item. This way we make sure you get the deal. Oh no, it's not possible to modify my offer anymore. There was a recent system update with blockchain functionality. No way we can make sure you win. Now we have to follow secured sourcing and bidding process. A few days later, Sarah's supplier from the Lightbulb GmbH receives a contract with the car company. She is happy about the fair and transparent process with S4 HANA procurement with blockchain. No painful and time-consuming lawsuits anymore, no irritations, everything fair. So let's summarize how all parties in this process profit from blockchain embedded in the new solution. First of all, the invited suppliers receive a login token for a blockchain app per email, so they can easily log in and um, upload the hashed value of their quotation documents. Also, suppliers receive RFQ document and can check that the hashed RFQ document matches hash value stored in blockchain app. This means they can just download the PDF they received per email, hash it manually, go into the app and manually compare the values, hashed values. This way, we make sure that the purchaser does not send out one RFQ for 100 items to one supplier and another one with 10 items to another supplier. 
Also, submitted quotations cannot be tampered because of blockchain mechanisms like distribution and the permanent storage of data. No bidding information is available to purchaser before registration deadline. This point exactly addresses the situation we just saw in the last story. So, um, also there's some simplified auditing process with a designated app. This means we provide a Fiori app um, for the auditing purposes in which an auditor can log in and um, generate a hash from the IFQ document and look for this hash value in the blockchain. So in the blockchain, he can also find all the submitted hashes for this RFQ. Um, this solution is a proof of concept. We will show you now some um, UIs from this solution so that you get, can get a feeling of how this looks and works. So on this first screen, you may think, hmm, maybe I already saw this or I know this. Uh, why do I show you like uh, an old UI? Because this is the first step of our process. So you will still go into your Fiori app and create a new request for quotation document. In the moment it's published, you already saw that um, there are some processes running in the background. Why did I highlight this number? up there in a, in a red square, not just to match it to my lipstick today, but um, so you can recognize that there's an ID for this specific request for quotation document. With this ID, an auditor can um, easily log into the auditing UI and search for this RFQ ID. Here you can see that there's one entry in the table below and um, it stores a stream ID and a document hash. With this document hash, uh, like we already said, you can uh, manually hash the PDF and compare if the two values are matching and then you'll be sure that you have the same document as you think you have. So then in the orange square, um, you, ha you see the stream ID. With this stream ID, the auditor can go into the multi-chain dashboard which is uh, provided on the SAP Cloud Platform and search for it. In this screen, you can see he found um, a stream, the, the matching stream ID from the slide before. And uh, in, in this part of the screen, you can see there's one entry which is called Request for Quotation, RFQ. And this is the RFQ we just created, stored as a hash value in the blockchain. So basically parts that our proof of concept covers, this is the auditing UI that we saw, and this is the functionality for storing the first hashed value of request for quotation in the first block of a new stream in blockchain. Um, well, as, I, as we mentioned already several times, this is just a proof of concept. We don't have yet any live customers. Therefore, all uh, interested parties are invited for collaboration on this uh, use case in procurement just approach us after the session. And now we're happy to answer your questions. We have a microphone for questions. But Any questions? There was a question. Ah, Lucas? Uh, first of all, I have to warn you, I have never had any contact with the blockchain mm -hmm. uh, uh, concept, and so, so my, so my uh, question might be unqualified. Um, as I understood it, it's, uh, the, the whole concept of your proof of concept is uh, information control and, and, and fraud prevention. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand you are utilizing the blockchain um, for the for the technical uh, foundation to to use it, um, but but um, from a technical point of view, I mean I can also create hash values in my system with another technical means. And what is kind of is there some some reason to to use the concept of blockchain, especially for uh, for fraud prevention, um, other than it's there and you might not invent your own system, other like certain other key values of, uh, of the whole technical concept? 
So with the blockchain, um, it's possible to not just to store the information in one place, but to distribute this um, over in a whole network. So everyone in the network gets the same information, and if there will be fraud or somebody will tamper with the data, um, everybody else in the whole distributed network will um, see that and um, yeah can intervene in this in this uh, use case. And yes. How much effort will it cost to, to bring this into action? That's a good question. So um. I should know this. <laughs> um, how much time does it take to bring this into action? How much effort? So um, as you could see, we just started with this proof, proof of concept and we had only the first step running right now. Um, and it took us, I think, about half of a year. So um, yeah, there, I think we, we need more time for that, but I'm not sure how long it will take in the end. So maybe one year. But the, config the configuration of this whole multi-chain, can you give a rough the estimation? Config the configuration of the multi-chain yes. or? Oh, I think the configuration of the multi-chain is really easy. So you can do this um, two Make weeks if you have no experience, maybe. Yeah. So does this answer your question? Sorry. I will deep dive because uh, okay. we also <laughs> implemented some scenarios with Hyperledger Fabric, mm -hmm. different use cases. But I really want to see this into action. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Any more questions? I have two questions. One question is what happened if Sarah finally provides product which is a uh, terrible quality? Sorry? Uh, I, I mean the, the this this person Sarah gets this uh, gets this uh, contract, but what happened if, if she fin finally gave this uh, very bad quality uh, uh, provide not uh, quality enough product, what happened? I think this, yeah. um, this part of the process is already outside of the use case that we just showed. So uh, 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 what we showed, it covers only the process before supplier nomination. Once she is nominated, okay. it's already another s process. Okay, yeah, thank it's, you. It's not tracked anymore in the system. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. Um, okay, okay. I'm Attila. I'm from SAP. I'm from the same building. So okay, nice. I was just, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about this. So what, what we just saw now, we have two suppliers and we have one person on the other side, so the purchaser. And what happens here is that we have two suppliers that are putting their, RFQ, uh, their quotation into an envelope. And they're sending this closed envelope to the, I mean, this is how I'm imagining this. They're putting this closed envelope and giving it to the company, but it, nobody's allowed to open it before the deadline. The, before the deadline is happening, is that right? Um, no, it's a if bit different. If we're abstracting, we, yeah. We just showed it like this because it's a bit easier. So normally you have like two deadlines. You have the de registration deadline, and um, this is the deadline um, until the, the suppliers can upload the hash value of the quotation document. So there's no document um, available for the purchaser or the car factory company. It's just the hash value stored in blockchain. And after this registration deadline passed, and uh, there's another like maybe two weeks or something like this until um, um, submission deadline. And in this part of time, the suppliers can send an email with the real quotation document to, to the purchaser. And um, the Hash values in the blockchain only are there for um, checking if the, these two documents are matching. So okay. the purchaser cannot see the quotations before, but he can check in, uh, until the submission deadline if these are the, the same documents. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay. okay. So, okay, for me, just my explanation in my head is like you're sending these closed envelopes and only a notar at the end on the deadline can open them with a specific key. But it's all, everybody in the network, if they would have the noter, they could open it and check 
if that was yes. everything was correct. Yes. Okay, now I've got it. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Okay. If there are uh, no more questions. If there are no more questions. Thanks, Nina. Thanks, Karina. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Thanks you. a lot. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah.